Welcome. Today we're going to talk about catastrophic events. This is based on a lesson presented by Chris Kessler from Kessler Science. He's got lots more amazing lessons on teachers pay teachers. Check them out. So let's jump into it. Catastrophic events. Your essential question. Can you predict and describe how different types of catastrophic events impact an ecosystem? Well, what is a catastrophic event? It's not something that's just moderate. It's something that's beyond extreme, something very harmful or devastating, causing sudden and great damage or suffering. Examples would be hurricanes, earthquakes, tsunamis, and tornadoes. We're going to talk about each of those. This is not just something that goes a little bit wrong. This is code red, something's gone terribly wrong. It's catastrophic. Let's find out more about catastrophic events on Earth. Well, flood would be one of them. Yes, this guy looks like he is enjoying his flood, but in general, a flood is an overflow of a large amount of water beyond normal confines, meaning it could happen because of a storm surge or maybe a dam broke and a, a river that used to be in a different area that it's not is now there. It will remove crucial sediment. Sediment is very important. It's part of that weathering and erosion process where you get these tiny bits of rocks called sediment that are needed in areas. It will cause temporary decrease in populations. Next, let's talk about a hurricane. A hurricane will develop over warm water with low pressure. So it does not happen in the cooler months. It's gonna happen in more of a warm environment. There will be wind damage, flood, and once again, loss of organisms. Plants and animals can be completely destroyed because of a hurricane that's come from the ocean. Here again, it's gonna be by the water. So you can see this is um, Hurricane Michael. Look at the land and these organisms, trees, gone. Any animals that lived in this area, gone. Complete catastrophic event. Tsunamis. Tsunamis are long high sea waves caused by earthquakes in the ocean. So they're actually generated from the energy of an earthquake causing a large wave to go inland. There'll be massive flooding. You will get a change in the landscape. The population will decrease. Here is a before and after. Uh, this was in Natori, the, I believe Japan. They have often got tsunami drills they will do out there because it's so common in those island areas off of China to have tsunamis that will go really far inland and just destroy the land. We just said tsunamis are caused by earthquakes, so let's talk about earthquakes. They are violent shaking of the ground as a result of plate tectonic movement along faults. Alfred Wagner had a theory that our plates were moving. It, you can verify it now through GPS that the plates do move at about a centimeter per year. If they don't move, they can build up energy and then you'll get a sudden shift in the landscape and that will cause an earthquake. Gas lines can be broken. Fire will happen after that. Buildings fall down. Here's a before and after. Before an earthquake, after an earthquake. Again, it's catastrophic event, disaster. <laughs> Another goofy one, but a blizzard. We had a snow apocalypse not that long ago and we all got a chance to see what it's like. Severe snowstorm with high winds and low visibility is your blizzard. You can get death of organisms. Mosquito population can end up dropping because they don't really have anywhere warm enough to stay. This part's huge. Trees knock down power lines. Ice building up on power lines alone can cause power to go out. Without power, you lose the ability to refrigerate. You can lose a lot of food items. Awful for areas. Let's go opposite of having a lot of precipitation. What if there's not a lot of rain? Prolonged periods of abnormally low rainfall. The dust bowl here in the United States was caused because we did not rotate our crops properly and we were just using up all the nutrients in the land, letting it dry out when there wasn't any rain. So loss of animal and plant life, and in, that includes crops. We need crops to live. Here is Folsom Lake in 2014 compared to 2011 after a drought where there just wasn't a lot of rain in that area. 
<laughs> Back to a goofy one. Now, tornadoes. We talked about hurricanes are generated in the water, the warm water areas. Tornadoes happen on the land. You get a mix of warm and cold air, and it can cause a vortex of violent wind, devastating to anything in its path, path possible loss of population of different plants and animals. Looking at these trees, you can see, gone. Anything that lived in these trees, gone. The homes, gone catastrophic and this was in north texas wildfires california has a lot of wildfires they are so frequent they will name them like we had hurricane katrina off the gulf coast catastrophic event they'll name their wildfires that happen so frequently out there fires caused by lightning or by a, a person in a wooded area that maybe didn't put out their campfire Again, a lot of droughting can cause that. So that drought that we talked about, the lack of rainfall, can end up causing these other catastrophic events. You will get short-term devastation to all producers and consumers in the area, meaning they're gone. But sometimes after a fire, there'll be some good fertile soil to build upon later. So it can have some positive impacts in an environment. Here's before and after insane amount of organisms destroyed here, catastrophic. Volcanoes, it's a mountain with a vent from which lava and ash flow. Thankfully here in the US, we don't have a lot of volcanoes. There's the Yosemite, which is a super volcano, but that would be a catastrophic event for the entire United States if it ever blew. Total devastation of an e ecosystem touched by the lava or ash. This is an example in Hawaii's Kilauea, where you can see the landscape destroyed, completely destroyed by lava. In Pompeii, Mount Vesuvius exploded with such hot ash that people were literally bur burnt and turned to stone as they were killed. Those organisms in that area completely destroyed. So after all this about catastrophic events, can you predict how different types of catastrophic events impact an ecosystem? I am hoping that this was helpful. Thank you so much for your time. Bye-bye.